Given that the plan does not clearly define the obligations of both sides, some Russian scholars believe that this is only a memorandum of cooperation between the two sides, with no guarantee of the effectiveness of cooperation, and there is no guarantee that proximity to China will ultimately translate into the long-awaited development of the Far East. The author believes that the development of the Far East depends entirely on Chinese government-led investment, which is neither realistic nor objective. Only by improving the investment environment, reducing institutional barriers, and widely attracting domestic and foreign private investment can its development be accelerated. Currently, the institutional environment in the Far East region of Russia continues to improve, and the operational effectiveness of the system is evident. Based on years of cooperation practice and complementary advantages, China-Russia's cooperation in the Far East region has already laid, laid a good foundation for development. Against this background, if the plan can be truly accelerated and implemented in accordance with the model of government setting up, enterprise singing, and market operation, the cooperation between China and Russia in the Far East is expected to achieve positive results. 1. Favorable Conditions First, the institutional environment for development in the Far East has continued to improve. Since 2007, the government of the Russian Federation has successively launched three strategies and plans for the development of the Far East and Eastern Siberia region, the Federal Special Plan for Economic and Social Development of the Far East and Outer Baikal region before 2013, the Economic and Social Development Strategy for the Far East and Baikal region before 2025, and the National Plan for Economic and Social Development of the Far East and Baikal region before 2025. So far, Russia has established a strategic thinking for the development of the Far East region, from a global perspective, based on the resources and geographical advantages of the Far East, accelerate the pace of Russia's integration into the economic space of the Asia-Pacific region, ensure the diversifi diversification of Russia's export market, prevent the decline of the country's economic and political influence in the Far East and Baikal regions, and curb the downward trend of the population in the Far East and Baikal regions, safeguarding Russia's geopolitical and geoeconomic interests. In 2011, Russia established the Far East and Baikal Regional Development Fund, and in 2012, it established the Far East Development Department. It also promoted the image of the Far East region by hosting the 2012 APEC Leaders Summit. President Putin stated in his 2013 State of the Union Address that Siberia, the revitalization of the Far East and the region is Russia's priority task for the entire 21st century, and the development of the Far East and Siberia has been raised to unprecedented heights. After August 2014, under the pressure of Western sanctions, Russia became more aware of the importance of leveraging Asia-Pacific countries to develop the Far East and East Siberia regions in order to get out of difficulties and overcome its economic structural shortcomings. Since 2015, Russia has started to establish Advanced Development Zone and Strategic Development Zone in the Far East region. The Free Port of Lady Vostok Since 2016, the Far East has implemented a free provision for citizens of the Russian Federation. One hectare of land, planned to retain and attract talents. Since 2017, the policy of reducing industrial electricity prices in the Far East has been implemented, and the technology park, jointly established by the Skalkovo Fund and the Federal University of the Far East has been established in the Russian island. In 2018, the Russian federal government launched three new measures, first, to incorporate the Outer Baikal border region and the Republic of Bryant into the Far East Federal Region, expand the authority of the Ministry of Development of the Far East, and plan to establish advanced development zones in the Outer Baikal border region and the Republic of Bryant. The second is to move the administrative center of the Far East Federal District from Khabarovsk to Vladivostok. The third is to establish a special administrative region in the Far East and propose an offshore financial center. The relevant bill is already in the presidential review stage. Secondly, the operational effectiveness of the Far East development policy has been evident. According to the Russian Ministry of Far East Development, as of 2017, by the end of the year, Russia had approved the establishment of 18 advanced development zones, with 210 enterprises settling in, investing 76 billion rubles and creating 39,600 jobs. Entry of Vladivostok Freeport there were 432 enterprises, 365 billion rubles of private investment, and 36,000 jobs were created. Where? In the two and a half years from mid-2015 to the end of 2017, China accounted for about 85% of the foreign investment attracted by the Russian Far East. Chinese investors have applied for the implementation of 32 investment projects in the Far East, Advanced Development Zone, and Vladivostok Freeport, with a planned investment of $4.2 billion. Free Port of Vladivostok The electronic visa system was implemented in August 2017. 
By the end of 2017, 6,044 foreign citizens from 18 countries had obtained electronic visas to the Far East. Since the implementation of the free provision of one hectare of land policy, by the end of 2017, more than 60,000 land use permits have been issued. In addition, thanks to this policy, HABA, three new settlements have been built in the Rovsk border region and Sakhalin, Sakhalin prefecture. Since the beginning of 2017, the industrial electricity prices of the five federal entities in the Far East have significantly decreased, approaching the Russian average, 4 rubles slash kilowatt hour in 2017. Specifically, 12.76 rubles slash kilowatt hour in Chukchi Autonomous Region, down 68.6%, Republic of Saha, Yakut. 7.61 rubles slash kilowatt hour, down 47.4%, 6.06 rubles slash kilowatt hour in Magadan Prefecture, down 34%, 5.99 rubles slash kilowatt hour in Kamchatka Border Region, down 33.2%, 5.76 rubles slash kilowatt hour in Sakhalin Prefecture down 30.5%. In the process of promoting the development policy in the Far East, the work of the three institutions has achieved remarkable results. First, Far East Development Company. It is responsible for the infrastructure construction of the Advanced Development Zone and serves as a window for investors in the Advanced Development Zone and the Vladivostok Free Port. As of the end of 2017, the company has led 177 infrastructure projects in the Advanced Development Zone. The second is the Far East Human Resources Development Agency. It provides free services to attract talents to work in the Far East and residents to move to the Far East from other regions, and specifically implements the policy of providing one hectare of land for free. By the end of 2017, it had been employed by 209 enterprises. With a workforce, a workforce of 8,700, personnel training has been organized for 22 popular professions needed by new enterprises. The third is far away. East Attracting Investment and Supporting Export Administration In 2017, it attracted 350 billion rubles of private investment for the Far East. Third, the cooperation between China and Russia in the Far East has a good foundation. The seven priorities proposed by China and Russia in the plan. There is a good foundation and prospect for cooperation in all fields. Natural Gas and Petrochemical Industry Russia plans to build the largest natural gas and petrochemical cluster in the Asia-Pacific region in the Far East, taking advantage of the rich oil and gas reserves in the Far East, strong oil and gas pipeline transportation capacity, direct access to the ice-free port through the raw material transfer railway network, and proximity to the consumer market. Currently, a series of large-scale projects are already under construction, such as Amur Natural Gas Processing Plant, Dongfang Petrochemical Complex, Yamal LNG Project, etc. The Amur Natural Gas Chemical Complex of the Civil Group and the Arctic LNG-2 project are also in the proposed stage. Solid Mineral Field, relying on the rich reserves of gold, silver, copper, tin, lignite, stone coal, iron ore, and other resources in the Far East, Russia has planned projects such as a mineral raw material cluster centered on the Utican Copper Mine, a mining and metallurgical cluster in the Amur region, a northeastern mineral cluster in Yakut, and a mineral raw material cluster in the northern Kamchatka Peninsula. Transportation and Logistics Three Chinese-funded enterprises, including Shantong, have been approved to settle in the only industrial logistics park in the Far East, the Advanced Development Zone of Nagshinsky, committed to creating a transit base and e-commerce platform for import, export, processing and transportation between China and Russia. Agriculture Russian agriculture is in a strategic transition period from import substitution to export orientation, and China's food security concept gradually seeks to achieve a dynamic balance between food supply and demand at a higher level. The Russian Far East region adjacent to China has the advantage of producing green ecological food. In promoting agricultural cooperation, in November 2018, China and Russia signed the Agricultural Development Plan for Northeast China and the Russian Far East and Baikal regions. As an important document guiding agricultural cooperation in the border areas of the two countries, the plan proposes that in the future, China and Russia will jointly build a series of food, oil processing, animal husbandry and fishery complexes, as well as aquaculture farms, committed to producing high-value added products, developing agricultural product logistics facilities, and applying innovative agricultural technologies. Forestry, the Far East region of Russia has about 30% or more of Russia's forests and 40% of its timber reserves. China has the world's largest timber consumption market, and the two sides are highly complementary in forestry cooperation. After years of practice, Chinese enterprises have paid more attention to environmental and biodiversity protection in their forestry investment in the Russian Far East. 
In some regions, a relatively complete cooperative industrial chain has been formed, including planting, harvesting, processing, export, single road transportation, sales, and maintenance of harvesting equipment. With the introduction of Russia's policy of increasing log export tariffs and reducing export tariffs on wood deep processing products, there will be greater cooperation space between China and Russia in wood deep processing, forest product research, and other aspects in the future. Aquaculture, Russia has over 150,000 hectares of idle sea areas in the Sea of Japan and the far east coast of the southern Okhotsk Sea, which are suitable for aquaculture. Moreover, aquaculture varieties, such as sea cucumber and scallops, have a broad market in China, Japan, and South Korea. Russia is currently considering establishing an advanced development zone for aquaculture in the Far East and is conducting relevant research. Tourism, the Far East and Siberia region has multiple national nature reserves and national parks, many unique natural land landscapes and world natural heritage sites, Lake Baikal, Kamchatka Peninsula, and the active volcanoes of the Thousand Island Islands, large coniferous forests distributed along the coastline, and vast uninhabited areas, as well as a large number of historical and ethnic cultural monuments. Russia's Far East region is about two hours flight away from China, Japan, and South Korea, with a huge potential customer base in the tourism industry. In China in particular, outbound tourism will see a significant increase in the next five years. China and Russia can jointly create tourism and leisure brands in the Far East, focusing on developing tourism and leisure projects such as business tourism, folk tourism, cultural and historical tourism, medical care tourism, ecological tourism, and maritime leisure tourism. They can also take extreme challenges, sports, exploration, scientific research, fishing, and other more active leisure projects as the future development direction. Two constraints. Admittedly, policies such as advanced development zone and Vladivostok Freeport can provide investors with infrastructure construction support, tax incentives, and necessary administrative services within a certain region, but it is still difficult to fill the gaps in the economic development of the entire Far East region. The future implementation of the plan will also face constraints from the overall investment environment in the Far East, as follows. First, population size constraints. The population of the Far East is small and unevenly distributed, resulting in a serious drain of high-quality talents. According to the latest administrative divisions, the Far East Federal District includes 11 federal entities, with a total area of 6.952 million square kilometers, a population of 8.256 million, and a population density of 1.19 people slash square kilometers. The population of the Far East is mainly concentrated in the coastal border region, the Khabarovsk border region, the outer Baikal border region, the Amur state, and the Republic of Bryant, where the climate conditions are relatively good. The population of the Republic of Saha, Yakut, the Chukchi Autonomous Region, and Magadan Prefecture with poor climatic conditions is relatively insufficient, with only 50,000 people in the Chukchi Autonomous Region and a population density of 0.07 people per square meter. Square Kilometersa Inadequate population not only results in a narrow consumer market in the Far East, but also affects the labor force for investment projects. Supply creates constraints. According to the newly revised National Plan for the Social and Economic Development of the Russian Far East and Baikal Region, B, by 2025, the Far East and Baikal regions will be able to create 98,100 jobs, and the population of the entire region will increase to 11.2 million, currently 10.665 million, including the 2.5 million population of Irkutsk State, representing an increase of 535,000 people. people. Even if the above plans can achieve the expected goals, it is difficult to fundamentally reverse the constraints of population factors on the development of the Far East, and the implementation effect of the above plans may not be satisfactory. Second, industrial structure constraints. During the Soviet era, the Far East was an important source of raw materials throughout the country, mainly producing. The industrial sectors include energy, forestry, fisheries, and military industries. At the beginning of the collapse of the Soviet Union, Russia's radical economic restructuring led to a sharp decrease in defense orders, a sharp contraction in military production, and a significant impact on industrial development in the Far East. Currently, the Far East Federal Region is still one of the most backward regions in Russia. Apart from mining, timber harvesting and processing, and fishing, other industries are not prominent throughout Russia. The relatively single economic structure is difficult to effectively absorb labor, exacerbating the population and talent drain in the Far East. Although the number of graduates from various universities in the Far East has increased since the 1990s, there is a serious shortage of experts in the Far East who have mastered modern vocational skills. Many high-quality managers, engineers, and scholars have moved to the central region of Russia. 
the lack of talent has led to a lack of innovation capacity in the Russian Far East. Judging from indicators such as the number of inventions, scientific and technological expenditures, the proportion of innovative enterprises, and the proportion of innovative products, the Far East region is relatively backward. The lack of innovation has seriously affected the optimization and upgrading of the industrial structure in the Far East. Third, transportation infrastructure constraints. The density of the railway network in the Far East is lower than the Russian average. 1 slash 3. Among them, Magadan Prefecture, Kamchatka Border Region, and Chukchi Autonomous Region are not connected to railways, and the railway network density of the Republic of Sakha, Yakut, is only 2 kilometers slash 10,000 square kilometers. The two main railway lines, the Siberian Grand Railway and the Bay Railway, are seriously aging and urgently need to improve their transport capacity. The density of the road network in the Far East is approximately 18% of the Russian average. In federal and regional highways, about 50% of the mileage cannot guarantee normal transportation, while 20% of the mileage has poor transportation conditions at a high traffic accident rate. Air transportation plays a pivotal role in the economic development and social life of the Far East and East Siberia regions. For the remote regions of the Far North and the Kuril Islands, air transportation is basically the only choice for daily transportation. Although 28 of Russia's 64 ports are located in the waters of the Far East, more than three-quarters of the freight volume in the waters of the Far East is completed by ports located in the Khabarovsk border region and the coastal border region. Many port facilities are inadequate and in disrepair. Overall, due to outdated transportation infrastructure and means of transportation, there are many potential transportation safety hazards in the Far East, and the low level of multimodal transport development makes it difficult to form an effective logistic system, affecting Russia's transit transport potential to connect Asia-Pacific countries and Europe. Fourth, power system constraints. A unified power system has not yet been formed in the Far East. The power systems of the Republic of Bryat and the Outer Baikal border region belong to the Siberian power system, which operates synchronously with the unified power system of Russia. The power systems of Amur Prefecture, Khabarovsk border region, Jewish Autonomous Prefecture, Binhai border region, and the Republic of Sakha, Yakut, constitute the Eastern Power System, which is not synchronized with the unified power system of Russia. The power systems in the Kamchatka border region, Magadan Prefecture, Sakhalin Prefecture, and Chukchi Autonomous region operate separately. In addition, there are still some areas that cannot be connected to major power systems due to their remote location, and can only rely on distributed power supply points for power supply. The raw materials used for power generation in independent power supply systems are not only expensive, but many also need to be imported from outside, resulting in high electricity prices in the Far East and Eastern Siberia regions, requiring cross-subsidies. For a long time, the economic development of the Far East has been plagued by issues such as insufficient reliability of power supply, 